What's next on the on the agenda? Oh, pleasure. Hang on, let me just do that pleasure. Ah. All right, let's have a look at the wavetable editor. Uh, it's a pretty complex thing, but there's you can use it in a simple way or you can use it in a complex way. You might be importing some data into it. You might be drawing your own wavetables. You might be playing around with the FFT section to make your wavetables. You might even be using the formula parser. Most likely not, but just in case, I'm going to be explaining every single damn thing about it. You've got uh, also a bunch of menus full of operations you can apply exporting importing sorting adding removing frames selectively morphing between the different frames uh, processing the entire frames in one go processing individual frames with single over here i'll go through every single thing and i'll just have some coffee coffee is my new drug all right so I'll give you a little bit of overview on the interface. So what we got is up the top, we've got the FFT section, which I'll go into detail about, but just for the overview, the FFT contains the fundamental and its harmonics. And together when editing the FFT data called bins, each one is called a bin. When editing those things, uh, it changes the wave shape provided this button is turned on. This button, keeps both windows consistent. So the FFT section is essentially like the draw bars of a, uh, an organ. It's an additive synthesizer. Uh, I'll talk about it in more detail later. You can zoom in and out to see the partials right up to six times, which is only gonna show the, the very first ones. And if you go to oscillator B, you're basically jumping over, and I'll just show you, you're jumping over to this oscillator there and you're doing that. That's just a bit of a shortcut there. So I can just go over to A like that straight away instead of going out and going to A and going back, all right? That's nice. Um, so then you got uh, down the bottom here, you got the where the frames sit. You can have 256 frames, as I might have previously mentioned. Uh, you can have one frame if you want. You can have 10 frames, 30, 64, 128, 256. You can copy and paste frames. You can select with shift some frames like that, multi-select them. You can select individuals. You can actually move frames by dragging them across like so. You can add a frame by clicking there or clicking there. You can click a frame and get rid of that frame by clicking there. Yeah. You can cycle the frames by using, by scrolling this number here. That's one way to cycle the frames. Or if you've got 256 frames, and they go out the window, then you have this little bar here. I'm just gonna copy some and paste them in. Paste, paste, whatever, All right? Copy some more, copy them, paste them in, paste them in. So as you can see now, I've got this little scroll bar and I, that's one way I can go, I can navigate my frames because when you've got a two, 256, it becomes pretty hard to keep track of. You've got a graph editor, a certain kind of graph editor for each frame. Uh, you can set the grid amount from 0 to 64 here uh, by dragging the word grid and it sets both horizontal and vertical grid. If you want to set individual horizontal or vertical, you can go to these boxes here. So here vertical, here horizontal. You have reasons to do that. Now, if you've got, a, if you've got something in there, these arrow keys will move it one grid segment in that direction. So like so, and you can correct phase of your shapes by doing that. As you can see, this row of this row of bars is the phase. So this row of bars here is the frequency and the height of it, the percentage from 100 to zero, that is the amplitude of the selected frequency. So this be this one here is the fundamental frequency of the wave. Boom, see it? And then the next one is two times that fundamental frequency, the next harmonic, bang bang, bang, right? I'll cover that in more detail later. So this is the phase right here. This, so you've, let's say you've only got pretty much that fundamental there and you can see it making a single sine wave right there. And if you want to rotate the phase, you can set it here. And as you can see, the phase rotates as previously explained. If you want to rotate the phase 
using the grid, or you could just put it to 64 or whatever you like and use these. Okay, then you have undo, redo, undo, redo. Okay, uh, then formula parser, like I mentioned before, you can type in your formula, x to the power of y, bang. And in that case, that formula was uh, a formula which engages every single frame. So it's, it's, in, it's having y. I'm not really gonna go into detail the math behind this. You need to have your maths background for that, but I will cover that to some extent. I think it's outside the scope of what I'm wanting to show you. I'm not gonna teach you algebra. So anyway, y is representing time in this case. And so what have we done here? And I'll go into this later. This is what we just created, x to the power of y. But you might be more interested in this little drop down menu on, on the right hand side here, where you've got single wave shapes. If I select one of them, you'll see, there you go. That's a saw, single sign. It just has these and it shows you the formula. So you can sort of learn that way if you want. You can go, you can use this to learn. That's how I did it. A bit of that, bit of looking up stuff, bit of this and that. Square, it's a sign function with an x. We'll talk about that later. Then you've got multis as well, stock multis. Nice. Okay, look at that shit, okay? So I'm just initiate. Now let's talk about the drawing tools. First thing I wanna say is the most base thing you can do here is put the grid to zero, okay? And then you can take the mouse and just manually draw your wave shape if you like, like so. There you go. And then you could go plus, you can draw another one. You could get your daughter to draw it, your five-year-old daughter. She'll go, I'm drawing a line. And you could go, that's very good, darling. And then you would have this and you could say, my daughter made this or something. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, you can do that. And then when, and then beyond that, you can use the grid. Let's put the grid to two and see what we can do with that. So I'll initialize and here's a flat, this line's a flat, this is just, a, you can put in a flat line. With the grid at two, you've got segment one and it highlights, see that? See, it's highlighting there, that little line, and then it's in the middle, it's actually highlighting, it's a bit hard to see, it's highlighting, and at the top highlighting. So, that's where it's gonna make its action. So if I click here, there it goes, right? It's flattened that out. Click there, it's flattened that out. And the FFT, section has updated to show what's happened. Nothing, nothing's happened. There is nothing happening now. There's nothing happening with the partials or the fundamental or the phases. There is flat liner, a fucking flat liner, yeah? Nothing's happening here. We gotta have something happening. Our grid's still set two by two. So let's have a look at this. This is a vertical, uh, this is a upward slope. And as it, it just, it is as it looks. This is, this sort of part is pretty much kindergarten, mate. It's like, put the blocks together to make a shape. Yeah, okay, do it. So I'm gonna explain it anyway. So you got uh, this vertical, this sloping upwards thing, bang, bang. Hey, look, look what I got. I've got a sawtooth. Look what I got. I've got actually some weird DC offset sawtooth. Yeah, maybe I could do it the other way. Now what I've got? I've got a funny saw triangle. Yeah, what about that? I've got a sawtooth again. It's off phase, rotated into phase, bang. Sawtooth, cool. What about if I, that's it, so I've got the other way around, I can do, what if I wanna make it a bit more complex? Increase the grid size. Now we've got four by four. What if I wanna put a flat end there and a flat end there? Now I've got this interesting kind of sawtooth. Okay, what if I was to increase it to eight? Maybe now I can get this and I can put this back as, as you'd expect, whoop, yeah. yeah? Maybe I could do this, something weird like that. I'm making my own shapes, yay. Okay, let's have a look at the different things. We've gone flat, uphill, downhill. We got um, a, a sine wave shape. It's just a, a sine wave shape contained. It's like a stamp. There's your stamp, right? These are all little stamps and they go into the segments. If I chuck, a saw, if I chuck this sine wave here, bang, there's a little sine wave there. I could put the grid down to one by one, and that means that it will stamp the entire frame with this sine wave, bang. See, there's my entire frame. You liking the bangs? Bang, bang, I've got more bangs for you. I've got heaps of bangs. Two, bang, bang. Three, four, bang, 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 yeah? Bang down there, bang up there. Bang down there, bang down there, bang there. Bang it all the way, yeah? Put this up and bang it all the way through. Check that out, right? That's an interesting shape. It's just a little sine wave all the way. It's like the clone, like the clone stamp in Photoshop or something. That's really cool. It's made a quite a complex situation. More, 64, let's have a look. Even more complex, look at that. 
Interesting shape. It's much more interesting than a non-wavetable synth. It can do everything an additive synthesizer does up here in the FFT area. It can do everything that a wavetable synthesizer does in this area here. And then if you draw the basic shapes, it can do everything that a synthesizer does as well. It can almost do everything that a sampler does. That's why Serum is so fucking awesome, okay? So let's have a look at some of the other shapes. It's pretty self-explanatory. If I was to get this, this is just a half sign. It's a half sign tool, you know? And here's the opposite. So now I've got a quite an interesting sawtooth now, sort of weird curvy sawtooth like this. If I set this to four, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can put this there, 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 there. Getting some really interesting shapes here. And between the half sawtooth, I can actually make, and between, and between the half sine wave, I can make a sine wave. Cool. Then what's this then? This is a upward, this is like the upwards uphill thing. I don't care what they're called. They're so basic, it doesn't matter, right? I had another video where I was saying what they're called. Who gives a shit? See this? This is a curved version of this. S see that? And this is the opposite. There we go. There. We've just got a weaker sine wave now there. Okay. And there's, that's your basic shapes there. I don't know what else you'd need. You've got everything you need there. But now maybe you want to make some, some changes um, to what you've drawn, some edits. So let's say you've got this tool, this dot, 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 dot. But what's that? All that's going to do is it's going to join that point there with that point there. Bang. Right? It's going to, so if, if this was down here, right, and, and this was there, let's see what it does now when I put it here. Now, if I put this dotted line, it will join this point with this point. Ready? Done. It will join this point with this point. Go. You see? It just connects the points. It's pretty easy. There's not much to know about that. Connects the points, those two and those. Connecting that and that. Connecting that and that. Connect, yeah, so you see what it's doing? Then you can get still very, uh, you can get still very rigid, rigid, clean shapes, but that are not typically, that are not stuck to conforming to what can be made with these shapes. So that's just expanded a little more. So now that same thing again, but with curvature. So just as this piece is the same, is a curvy version of this piece, well, this joiner is a curvy version of this joiner. So let's have an example. Okay, we wanna join that to that there. We're just gonna chop this corner off with this bang. See that? And it's done it in a streamlined fashion, okay? And wherever the highlight comes up, there's a possible change you can make. If you go here, no change can be made here. No clicking here. If you go here, well, it's already been done. If you go here, what's gonna happen here? Nothing. What about here? It's gonna go up and join that line because it's a connector. Go. Check out the patchbay.io for all your preset needs and sample needs. Make sure you buy my packs, otherwise this might happen. Who am I? I'll tell you who I am. I'm a fucking preset psycho. I made so many fucking presets, my head's gonna explode. Quality presets, reasonable price. I've sold 3,400 packs online at thepatchbay.io and the reviews do not lie. There are 217 four or five star reviews and they are glowing. Beauty Diva, Pins One, Holy Sick, Lepro, Serum, J8, Pal, you know the cleanest drum samples that are available online. You can go and download them right now. Crystal Clarity Drums, Pack One, Pack Two, Pack Three. They are the cleanest. I've got pads, I've got leads, I've got I've got bass, I've got snares, I've got kicks, I've got hats. I've got everything you need to produce quality electronic music. The presets are handcrafted and they're gonna take your music to the next level. My presets are so good that they're even up on pirate sites. 3,400 packs sold. I am the top seller on the Patch Bay and it is like that for a reason. Remember that. Check out the patchpay.io right now. Go and check out those packs. Go and grab those packs. Go and grab a lot of packs. Make me happy. I'll make some more packs and I'll make some more presets for you. You have so many quality presets at your fingertips that you will never have a creative block.
So let's have a look what you can do with that tool. Let's say you had a real rough shape that hand drawn. Um, by the way, you have to be on the top tool to have this to the zero and zero thing work, right? If you're on this tool, it works. If you're on this tool, it works. But if you're on this, it's not doing it anymore. So I usually just revert to this tool. So I made this piece of crap, wait, I'll make it crappier. Crap, 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 crap. It's a total crap now. And maybe I can just take this joiner and run it across there at a high grid setting. Watch what happened. It's just gonna neaten the whole thing up, right? It's simplifying it and it's neatening it. And see, now I have a sort of low poly version of what I did. Poly. <laughs> um, sorry to use blender terms or whatever. Okay. And if you lower the grid setting to a smaller segments, you're going to get an even lower detail version, a minimalistic version of what you just did there. So it's taken away a bit more detail. Let's go lower. Now it's going to get really basic. There you go. It's really just summarized the situation. Let's draw a piece of shit again with the right tool selected. Piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit. And let's go 64 and take the curvy join the dot tool. I don't care what it's called and run it over. Now it's done the same thing, but it's still got curvature, right? It's cleaned it up, but it's cleaned it up with curvature. Okay. If you reduce, same thing again, we're going to have a more minimalistic, but still curvy version of the piece of shit. So now it's a nicer piece of shit. Uh, and because of this, the sound, the resulting sound will be smoother because there's less sharp points. So, and if I put it right down to very low, you'll see what it does. It will be very basic. There you go. It's just turn it into a signy type thing. Okay. So that's the stuff you can do. That's the stuff you can do. Uh, I can, let's say you import, um, let's say you imported something, right? And there was a little discrepancy in the wave. I'll just imitate that now. So Let's say right now that's all good, but let's say you like the whole wave, except there's this little piece of crap notch in there that you don't like, which is upsetting the entire sound. So you, you wanted a smooth thing and you want it like that, except there's this is in there and it's going on top and you're like, fuck that, I want that gone. Well, set your grid setting so that it encompasses that, it encapsulates that thing you don't like, as I just did. See now that that, thing I don't like sits in one horizontal segment okay and at this point it doesn't matter what the vertical segment really is but if it might be nicer to just set it as you'd expect so now you can see that the piece of crap now sits in one segment here pretty much and then I can basically just take this join the dots tool and because it's not a very far to go we can just use a straight line there and look I just fixed that crap I just fixed that you wouldn't in that situation use the curvy tool because watch what happens there, not as good. So in a lot of cases, the, just the straight point to point tool is really handy there, okay? Let's have a look at other things here. We now have this. What this does is it takes uh, a segment of along the horizontal grid and it just, you can drag it up and down like that. And you might want that to go down. So essentially you could draw a shape, which I'll do now at zero and zero. And let's say it's something like that, right? And now I want to make it uh, cleaner. So I'm going to get this tool and I'm going to set it to max. Go like that. It's, you know, fairly nice. And now, now I actually want to maybe I'll just quickly filter this. I'll tell you about this later. I'll quickly filter this. And now I've got a clean shape there. So let's say you've got this clean shape, but now you want to add sort of displacements. And here we go. We'll just add some displacements with this tool like that. And that sort of comes, that ends up creating quite an interesting sound. Okay. And let's just, for the sake of it, go back here and clean them up, clean it up a bit by running that through. You see how versatile this thing is? Undo it. Here, another thing you can do, you can create a clipped waveform. So let's say I do one and one and I chuck in a sine wave and let's say you want to have you want to have a distorted sine wave an overdriven sine wave a clipped sine wave you can put it at one and one you grab this tool and you lift it up and it's chopping it it's chopping it off it's flattening it at the top and you lift it down and there you go look at that you've just created uh you've just created a clipped sine wave and you know if i was to single process and normalize there you go you've got this overdriven sine wave okay which is like we discussed before over here in the sub right there okay so that's something you can do it's pretty cool you can actually draw you can also use this and just draw sort of 
along the wave just to make it more jagged. Do you see that? So instead of just grabbing individual parts and moving them, you can just sort of drag it along there and jagify. That's the thing, you can jagify the goddamn sine, sine wave, right? Speaking of doing that kind of thing, you can even, I'll just set this to 20 or whatever. This is the noise tool down here. This will basically just, it almost randomizes all the samples um, in the segment. So if you click the segment and drag upwards, there you go, I've dragged really far upwards. And what it's done is really, um, it's in a very exaggerated way, it's randomized the, the amplitudes of each sample. If now I drag down, it will cool it a bit, it cools it down. See that? And the amplitudes now conform more with the, the initial amplitude of the, those samples. Down, 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 down. And look, I'm, see that? I'm creating a fuzz. There you go. See that? So I could drag it along like this. And just be careful of the X, Y positioning of my mouse and have varying fuzz. This is just to have a bit more nature to your wave. And this would just be maintaining that fundamental, as you can see there, it's maintaining it right? But it's adding a whole lot of other debris all the way up the spectrum up there. A basic way to do that is to go uh, to one and you can use that tool on one. Let's chuck in the sine wave like so, chuck in the noise like so. It's doing it to the entire frame now. So now I can actually have a fuzzy sine wave, which is kind of cool, right? There you go. There's the fundamental and there's a bunch of fuzz all going on at different phases, random phases. Pretty sick, pretty damn sick. This is a mirror, the bottom one here, that's, really, that's been added lately. It's a mirror tool. So whatever, if I put the grid to four, then whatever I do on this side will happen on that side. Because of the polarity of the wave inverts, obviously, as it goes past the center, then it will do it upside down too, of course. It's not gonna repeat it there. So let's say I wanna put this into being that. Well, look, what do you know? It's done the same thing, mirrored upside down. So. That's why it's both pointing the same way, mirrored and upside down. See that? And that's it. So that's all the tools you can use here. There's nothing else really you can do here. And I just want to point out a few little weird things. Things You can always have this mirror thing enabled no matter what tool you're using. Let's put it to zero and zero plus have the mirror. Now if I draw, it's mirroring my drawing. That's pretty handy. And now it's doing it the other way. That's very nice, okay? Arcade Summer says that's nice, all right? I can turn that off for a second. Now I could keep zero and zero and I try a bunch of other tools. What if I do this, what happens? That's fun. It's actually, what it's doing, it's a sort of a combination between shifting vertically the segment and zero and zero. So what is it doing? It's shifting vertically the smallest grid setting, which is zero, which is one sample. It's shifting each sample down. So if you run it along, you can just do sort of artistic detail that doesn't hurt the general shape too much. It's sort of like magnet, magnet. It's like a magneting to what's already there, you see? So you can draw a simple shape, right? Let's say I do this at grid setting one, right? And then I, you know, and then I select that and put grid setting zero. Then I can do a little bit of realism to that, you see? A little bit of realism. Like this is not the digital world anymore. This is the analog world here, okay? So now I'm having fundamental with, again, a little bit of realism. Realism's awesome when you keep it in a box. And then um, what else can we do here? Let's undo that. What if we were to use the sine wave tool, right? At zero, zero, what happens now? Nothing. If we use this tool, nothing. This, nothing. What about this? Nothing's going on. What about this? Nothing going on. What about this? Oh. Look at that. It's wanting to like sort of draw on the roof depending on the X, Y position of the mouse. And these are just weird anomalies really. I don't know if they're very intentional, but if I go, <laughs> see, it's interesting. I don't know what, what's gonna be useful for really. And then here we go again, I've increased it to 31. We just got bigger things like that. You know, essentially we got the line right up there. If we didn't, you could make sort of decimated, um, bit crushed kind of shapes if you just were to grab this flat tool here and set a grid setting like a 16, let's say, 16 or eight, then you could do, see? And you're making sort of digital looking stair-steppy type sounds. And because of that step, 
Not that digital audio really has stair steps, but the resulting sound will sound like it's a lower sample rate. So this will create a lower sample rate sound as well. So if we just had six, that could be like a six bit wave shape. You know what I mean? If we had like 32, it could be a 32 bit wave shape, but it's not really directly um, correlating what I'm talking about. Still, lo-fi sounds, crushed sounds, just grab that tool and you can make those. Thanks for watching.